Hello, this is Joe McGee. You know, we've been doing seminars across the country for years. Seminars on marriage, parenting, men, money, and family. We want to encourage you to email us and let us know if this podcast has helped you. Or maybe you have joined us live at one of our seminars. If you have a testimony, you just want to tell us what God's doing in your life, please email us at mail at joemcgeeministries.com or you can contact us through our website, joemcgeeministries.com. There you will find helpful articles and tools to help you grow in God, your marriage, and your family. We love you guys. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Hello, guys. This is Joe and Angel. Welcome to Mailbag Monday. We've got a great list of questions today, Angel. Let's just jump in. Okay, Joe. Let's first start about kids. So I want my kids to grow up and be leaders in their school and community. How do you start to teach kids about leadership? Well, that's real simple. Leadership is all about serving. Jesus said, you want to be great in my kingdom, you must become the servant of all. So you got to teach your kids how to serve, not show off. You're not trying to be the best. And listen, I believe in earning the letter jackets or the band thing or whatever you're going to be, a cheerleader, doesn't matter. What you're trying to do is serve because in life, life's about serving other people. Um, I've read so many stories about great CEOs and one of a large car company he said, I didn't put my... I didn't put my name on the door. I don't even have my name on the desk. Everybody knows I'm the boss. And he said, I, but I learned to hire people smarter than me. And it was a great thing. He said, I'm not, I don't have to show off. Well, I'm the boss. you got to do what I say. He said, I'm here to make this company work really good. So I learned to hire people smarter than I was. And so he had a real good self-conscious. He said, I don't need your attention. I already know who I am in him, in whom in Christ. I'm accepted by the creator of the universe. I really don't need your affirmation. I've got the greatest affirmation in the world. And so when you leave home knowing who you are in Christ, you can go out and just you can be a blessing to everybody. You don't need their attention or their affirmation. Hey, how can I help you today? Jesus left everybody better than he found them. That's what he did on a regular basis. So as a kid, what are you trying to do? I'm, I want to produce successful kids. How do you become successful? Well, it's not just your IQ and your GPA. Uh, you know, you get hired for what you can do, you know, and what you know, one of the two things. But you're not going to be successful unless wherever you go, whatever you're good at, whether you're an engineer or a doctor, an attorney, or electrician or plumber, it's about how well you serve other people. Your success is going to be determined by how well you serve and leave other people. Because, you know, we've all met people like, man, I don't want to be around them again. We don't want to yeah. invite them over. I don't want to go there again because it didn't go well. Like, And so success is basically about how you serve. So that is the greatest thing you'll ever do is help your kid be successful by serving other people. Yeah, and I mean, as I'm looking at this question, it says you want your kids to be um, leaders in their school and community. I agree with you completely about the serving thing, but I also think that you need to take each child into consideration. Some kids, I have a friend that she has three kids, and uh, she said to me the other day, um, you know, that college was always very important for her husband, that they all go to college. But she said, this one kid that I have, I just kind of knew it's just not his thing. His, he is just not that kid. That's not part of his makeup. So Got you it. can push and force that kid and – um you know, but never ends great. So some are natural leaders, some aren't. But it's not, you know, it's not a, a a ding to be a servant and just stay at that level. Yeah, actually, I think that's a wonderful thing. Makes the best spouse. Everybody makes, everybody, makes the best boss. <laughs> it does. Everybody everybody can't be the one in charge always. So it takes a support. Even all through the Bible, you see that the men of God needed help. Yes. Support. Yes. So, I mean, I think you need to take the child into consideration as well. Because they all come out different. Boy, howdy. <laughs> okay, Joe, at what point is it okay to just say enough and get a divorce? I've heard about how awful going through a divorce is, but I can't see how it is worse than always being upset and angry. It's hard to see that, but it is. It is probably the worst thing that can ever happen to a human. Uh, divorce is just kind of jerks your guts out and leaves them on the road somewhere. And so we're trying to work because um, people think, man, I just want to get out of it. And I've got a big family, so I've had them. So I just need out. I need peace. And then you realize, okay, about four months after the divorce, you're going to realize if you're an average American, according to the U.S. Census, your income is going to drop about 40%. You know, and uh, and your family's going to start 
looking at you different, and your friends looking at you different. The people at church look at you. Oh, you're divorced. Oh, you're divorced. Like, and it's almost like somebody trying to brand you. Now, I have recommended divorce three times, and, and with my big family, look. This has gone south. It's not going to end, uh, especially when it gets abusive, both physically and verbally. I said, no, we can't tolerate this. So uh, if you're pleased to dwell with them, the Bible says dwell with them. If you're not pleased, we got a problem. And then I had one relative that was married and divorced several times. And uh, uh, and I wasn't part of that one. But uh, they got after the divorce, they got remarried about a year later, and they invited me to the wedding. I said, well, I'll come. And then they went and performed the wedding. I said, no, I won't do it. And I said, why? I said, you're not ready to get remarried. You shouldn't be getting remarried because you're not you're not mature yet. You haven't grown up. Because uh, the Bible says, you know, really like kind draws like kind. You're going to remarry yourself. And so... She had, I forgot how many marriages, but she kept doing, she kept marrying herself. And so it was just sort of a zoo. And like, you, you got to find out who you are first. You got to find out who you are. So I'd make people, hey, and I'm temp- I've handed them a blank piece of paper in my office. Here, I'm going to give you a blank piece of paper. You can use your computer. You can use your cell phone. You use your Bible. Write three scriptures about who you are in Christ. And most adults can't do it. I said, there's 134 verses in the New Testament alone in him, in whom in Christ. Can you give me three of them? No. You don't have a clue who you are, do you? Until you know who you are, you're going to have a problem the rest of your life. Well, having been divorced. Yes, ma'am. I can tell you firsthand why it is uh, not a great option. Um, because it never ends. And Listen, we're not saying that it's not an option that you're going to have to go through. It. Because, again, I have recommended But right. listen to Angel. Listen to Angel. <laughs> well, what I, what I want to say is... Um, you know, your emotions are so keyed up at the time that you make that choice to divorce because things have escalated to such a point. And you may have biblical reasons to divorce. Um, but I always say, because people would call me after, you know, I divorced, and they would call me when they were thinking about going through a divorce, always thinking I would be the one that would say, yeah, you do it. And I would be just the opposite, yep. because I've been through it firsthand. I know how painful it is, and I always say it's easier to work it out than it is to go through this, because yes. the biggest thing is the pain and the fallout your children have, I know. and it doesn't stop. I can tell you times, and I can't hardly talk about it because it'll make me cry, where <clears throat> my daughter would be in a closet crying yep. about her father. Yep. Um, I remember walking on... <laughs> this is emotional. Go ahead, We're hitting sir. the trigger here. Um, walking on campus with my son to go to college and him saying, I wonder if dad knows how much he's missed in our life. Those are just a couple of hundreds of moments like that. That it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. So you know, A spouse dying is 10 times easier. Than a divorce. It is. And even though as adults, uh, their father has become more visible in their lives, um, it's still, you know, painful. And, it, and and we have to address it at every wedding. Uh, if a grandchild, which I hope at some point I do have a <laughs> grandchild from them, but uh, if, if that comes into play, everybody's roles, it's awkward. It just never ends. There's a reason that it says God hates divorce. And it's because he meant for the marriage to be, you know, through time. Second greatest thing that ever happens getting married. And honestly, if you feel like I'm ready to pull that trigger, I would really suggest you get Joe's book. You don't find a great marriage, you build one. And if you are in at emergency levels, we do have the CD, but you, if, you got, if you need it today, you can go online and get it and download it on MP3. Yeah. And, but it it is vital that um, that is with all that's in you. I mean, if you're being abused, if you're um, if, if there's some kind of a there are times it has to end. There, yeah, there are, are times, times it has to end. And if there's an affair going on, I mean, biblically, you have an out, but you count the cost because it is enormous. And um, you know, as a mother of, of a child. 
You don't ever want to see your children go through that kind of pain. Well, God promised to be a father to the orphan and to the widow. Uh, I tell people, you know, listen, God loves you more than he's ever loved you. I mean, uh, sometimes, like I said, we've recommended going through divorce, like finances, it's going to be enough people. You're probably going to lose your house, going to have to get a job. You're going to live on about a third of what you were living on before. But there is a God who can show up, and he does miracles. It's not a switch. You don't flip it overnight. But there is a God who still loves you and will work things out for your good. It's just, it's not, don't, it's not a fascinated freight train. It's a slow moving boat, but God will bring you out of that. And he's got a way to work it out. And so, and I mean, besides the children thing, there are things like you said earlier, it does alienate you. You know, all my couple friends no longer would invite me out. I had <laughs> one couple, one couple through 12 years that would invite me out, yeah. you know, so it changed everything. And so it's a, very isolating, lonely place, and of course, that's where the devil wants you to go. Yep. Or, so, or, and then you jump into another relationship and take the same problems uh, in there. It gets so worse. It, yeah. it, so, I, I would just say, please. Um, and and we, we, we've counseled, we've talked to people, and like I said, everybody's been through this. Everybody's got a family, and so uh, and we tell people, so "Listen, you get a divorce, it'll take it'll take a minimum of five years for you to get back to normal." No, I'm normal. No, you're not. You just think you are. No. It is such a gut-wrenching affair because mm-hmm. two people are made one in God's image. And, man, that thing gets ripped out. It, God will do a miracle, but don't get in a hurry. The worst thing you'll ever do if you're going through a divorce is try to jump back in another relationship. Uh, just don't. I, I tell some people, guys, the greatest thing you'd ever do is don't get remarried until your kids get out of the house. You stay the parent. You stay the anchor. You stay the stability of their life. And uh, you need to understand when we're, well, I'm just ready to get divorced. You need to understand what that means. God is good. He will work it out. But your life's about to change radically. Yeah. God's still there, but it's going to be a radical change. I just need peace. Well, this ain't going to get you the peace you think you're looking for. The peace of God that passes all understanding, God will give you. But there's a different road you're going to walk, and uh, he'll be with you, and he'll bring it out. But it is not a fast-moving train. It's a slow boat to China kind of a deal. And I do want to say that if you are divorced, or maybe you've been divorced more than one time, yep. and maybe it was your fault, that, you know, that's not over. You're not, you know, sometimes we want to brand people like <laughs> divorce. And that's not, that's not, you know, that, that doesn't mean that's the end for you. That no. you know, you've gone down a road you can't get back from. God still has hope. You're not a secondhand child. God loves right. you. You can still run boldly to the throne of grace. God still answers your prayers. Uh, God is still a miracle working God. God's going to have new relationships in your life. It's going to go on. It's just try to give us some good thought. Don't just jump before you think. Is there any way I can fix this? Any way this thing can be saved? And, uh, and again, the three times I've recommended, like, guys, I thought we went through every hoop, ran through every wall. We did as much as we could do. And finally I said, no, this isn't going to work. They're not going to change. And we've got to get out of this thing. And uh, two of them remarried. went really good. And it took a while, but it went really good. And I do want to say that um, I had to really, and it took years, work on myself and say, what did I bring to this that caused this marriage to implode? Because it's never one-sided, never. And I definitely played a role, and on many parts. Uh, and 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 I had to take responsibility and say part of the failure of this was my fault. And um, so, um, you know, take heed to yourself and uh, and uh, please go to your pastor. Yes. You know, get this get this tape series or book stay involved in your local yep. church don't go hopping around there is a future and yes it's there just, is there is a future there is all right so joe what are your thoughts on christian versus public schools <laughs> 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 my wife and i disagree on its importance is it wise to try to insulate kids from the real world and does a christian school even provide a healthier environment I want to say, could I just say from the get-go, I sent my kids to Christian school, and one day, and they even went to a Christian college. Yes. One day, and I was a single mother. That was a lot of sacrifice for me. Man, and my family, it was was a tremendous sacrifice, and I was very proud that I did that. And one day, my daughter and I were driving past her Christian high school, and she said, I would never send my children to that school. And I said, whoa, (laughs) hold on just a second. Uh. And so she, I said, could you just not say that? Throw me a bone and say, Mom, great job. Thanks for the Appreciate sacrifice you. Yeah. there or something. They were doing that and going without to help me get there. And I don't agree with her on that. I think it was a really good um, um, school. But, well, she's not gone on and gotten her master's now. So she, she, she did. I did it okay. 
But um, so, Joe, jump in and tell us. Well, I had a great professor at the university that uh, he wrote a book called uh, School Choices. He said, listen, he had three kids. So one of my children went to a Christian school, one went to a public school, one I had to homeschool. And he's, he's, he's a professor at a very large university teaching on education. He said, what you do? I gave them the one they needed. I gave my child, this child needed public education. Chris go to smother them. Mm. This child needed Christian education. And what you have to understand, that Christian education is not a church school. Now, most of those are in a church, Christian schools, but it's not a church school. It's an education. And so uh, and when I remember when I was a school administrator, Christian school, all those years, and I try to tell parents. So every year we'd start school a week early. Uh, we'd have the parents come in on a Monday night. So Monday night, I'm telling you what a Christian school is and what it is not. We will not get your child saved. We're not going to call them to the mission field. We are an educational institution. We have to be Christian. So we believe in following certain books, certain things we follow and, and teach. Number two, on Tuesday, I would have a public school form. So all the parents who had kids in public school, listen, guys, this is what a public school is. This is what it is not. Don't go down there in Halloween and tell them to take the witches off the wall. It's Halloween. It's what they do. Uh, volunteer to be a homeroom mother. Volunteer in the classroom. You know, go on a field trip. Help out in the cafeteria. Be a blessing. Pray for your public school. Don't criticize. Don't pick it over at the state capitol. Don't do that. Then on Thursday, we had a homeschool seminar. This is what homeschool will do for you and will not do for you. There's no magic formula. So people say, what do you believe? So I believe in education. Well, what kind? Well, whatever's needed. You know, because we had parents that would come when we have our Christmas school uh, Monday night deal. And so I've had a mother stand up one time that very first year. Mr. Gee, I, I'm a single parent with five kids. I cannot afford Christmas school. Do you have any way you can help me? I says, no, ma'am. We are not a financial institution. We're not the Red Cross, the Salvation Army. We don't have any spare money. I said, no, and uh, she said, well, how can I get her? I mean, you can't come here. You can't afford to come here. Well, people were kind of like stunned. Like, how can you say that? You're a Christian school administrator. Yes, I'm a school administrator at a Christian school. We're not the Salvation Army. I said, ma'am, you need to get your kids in public school. We'll help you find a good one. And here's what you can do. And you need to come tomorrow night for the public school seminar. And so people say, what do you believe? I believe in education. So what happens is people make a Christian school like they're hiding. I'm going to hide my children from the world. There is as much sin in a Christian school as there is in any public school every day of the year. What makes it different is you have a different standard. For example, you know, it was like it was, um, and I hate to use the word Christian, it was a private school. We do, well, we believe in certain things. The goal here is to get all these kids into college. I believe if you're spending money to come to a private school, you're trying to get your kids' future So You're not trying to just get them out with a 12th grade education. I have plans for my child. Well, then we're going to prepare your kids for college. We're going to do the PSAT test, the PACT test. We're going to tell you how to start applying for scholarships in the ninth grade. We think different. We're trying to plan for your child's future, not just get them through high school. So it's different. So you had to, you had to kind of come up front. What are you buying? It's like you go to the grocery store. Well, you want the really good beans or the half price beans or the no label beans? <laughs> you know, it's depending on what you got in your pocket, that's what you're going to buy. And so God is everywhere. God's in the Christian school, the public school, and the private school. What has God told you to do? But you're not hiding your child from anything. There is no hiding. You got to you got to get God in your child's heart. And so what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to prepare you for life, and and I'm going to do everything I can. And whatever school that means, that's where we're going to go. And God's going to show up. Uh, you know, people talk about you know there were Christians uh, that worked for Nero. You know. And it's like you realize, no, there's, God's got people everywhere, even on the emperor's court, you know, and uh, he Christians are everywhere. So don't think you can live this uh, secluded, I'm a hide from sin, and I can mm-hmm. go somewhere, and that doesn't exist. God's everywhere, the devil's everywhere. You will choose. <laughs> yeah, and I think that uh, a school choice is a very private thing. Yes, it is. And I actually tried all three. So I did the Christian school. One semester <laughs> I tried homeschooling. I was the worst homeschool teacher ever. I finally just said, let's go learn economics and let's go to the mall. <laughs> yeah. and that became our daily, you know, playground. Yeah, so, so um, 12 hour class. Yeah, right? that was, by the way, my kid's favorite semester of school. Um, then one time my son wanted to go to uh, public school. I felt like they had had so much change from the divorce and everything that I felt like they needed a little bit more safer environment and uh so but i said okay so we went over this one morning to go check out the public school can you believe that this happened pull pull around the corner there's police cars everywhere and they've got yellow tape 
taping off the parking lot. Somebody had shot a gun through the windows. Yep. And I stopped in the front. And I'm going, are you sure this is where you want to go? And he goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but it is a really personal choice. I remember in, in a different kind of a way capacity uh, when I had my son, it was a really big thing then to do home births. In, in the area that I was at. And people would say to me, I was going to go to the hospital, and they'd say, "Where, where's uh, your faith? And I'd say... It's oh, in my doctor's hospital. Yeah, that's where it is. It's in, it's in my finances. Yeah. That's why I'm paying to go to the doctor. But but it's very personal. And so to yes. don't, don't, don't let someone else pressure you. That's something that you and your husband need to work out. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and uh, Between you and God, not, yeah. not other people. No, it is. And it is. And I think I think if you just... You know, get your options, but I do think, well, like Joe said, uh, there's there's going to be challenges. You know, no matter everywhere, where. everywhere. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm trying, I'm trying to prepare my child for the future. What's best for them? And after I get that, what can I afford? And I remember we were this very large university, and they were very anti Christian school. Uh, talked against it really bad, like it was bad. It was sorry, and you're a heathen if you send your child there. It's like, well, no. It may be best for some children. So, uh, like I said, the one professor I had, like, he sends three kids three different places. Would you, as a parent, I picked what was best for that child. And that's what it boils down to. What's best for this child? I get to start believing God either way. It's not like I can afford either one. I get to believe God either way. I get to believe God for the social environment or the money to do it. So, Hey, Joe, thank you so much for today. I almost needed a handkerchief there for a minute. (laughs) Yes, you did. Hey, I did want to say thank you so much to our partners that help make this podcast yes, possible. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, and if you're interested in becoming a partner, please just go to joehickeyministries.com, click on the partner tab, and fill out the information. Yes. Thank you, guys. We love you very much. Appreciate you so much, guys. God bless. Hey, thanks for listening today. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family, and we are here to help you get there. Make sure and go to our website, joemiggyministries.com. We've got all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.